What's up guys, it's your host here, Spartanic Arts DxD, back with another high school DxD related video, and today we're going to be doing What If Issei Was Betrayed? Betrayed to hell and back is what the story is called. Issei is betrayed by everyone around him, wanting nothing to do with him, giving him no choice but to purge his pieces. And they think he dies, but he is given another chance by the most powerful being ever to exist. So without further ado, please subscribe, and let's go ahead and get right into it. To Issei, it seemed like a normal day. Little did he know the chain of events that were gonna be caused would affect him so much. He would have to embrace it. For the whole school day, everyone was avoiding him, even his friends in the ORC. He didn't know why. He didn't know if he did anything to upset them or not. He couldn't figure it out at all. Drake, did I do something to offend my friends? I don't remember doing anything that would make them act this way, thought Issei, while trying to piece the puzzle together. I cannot say, partner. I will admit, they are acting up for some reason. Which reason? I do not know, though, responded Drag. Hmm. Well, let's just hope it doesn't escalate too far, or I will need to fix it, thought Issei. Soon, the school bell was ringing, signaling the lunch period to start. Issei wasn't really hungry, but he went towards the cafeteria anyway. He still couldn't figure out what he had done to be outcasted by his friends and family. As he walked along the corridor of his classes, he kept on thinking what he could have done to them. He had no clue at all. Was it something he said that offended them? For all these unanswered questions he had, they would soon answer themselves as he would be thrown into a situation he didn't expect. As he walked towards the cafeteria, he caught a glimpse of Akano and Rias walking his way. Most likely they were going towards their next classes for the day. He wanted to apologize for anything he could have done to upset them, so he walked normally towards them trying not to arouse any attention to himself since the school didn't really liked that he was so close to the ORC. As he neared them, he went to speak, he, to try to apologize, but they just walked right past him, like he didn't even exist, not a glance spared at him at all. No eye contact whatsoever. It only made him start to wonder even more about what he could have done. He didn't even go to the cafeteria. He needed to talk to someone before it went further than it needed. He soon found himself behind the door to the chemistry room. He was here to talk to his sensei Azazel to see if he possibly knew anything, so he knocked on the door. Soon after five minutes, the door was open for him, but something was off as well with Azazel. As soon as he knew who was there, he pretended to be uh, interested in pa paperwork. Azazel, is there something that I don't know about that made everyone mad at me? Asked Issei, hoping for a good answer. Sorry, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Sorry, but I have to go. Got some assignments to grade for my next classes, spoke Azazel. Issei didn't know what that was about either. Azazel was being overly formal with him for whatever reasons there were. Okay, just what the fuck is going on with everyone, thought Issei as he stayed as he started to get frustrated. I have no idea, partner. It is truly a strange and starting to be annoying, spoke Drake in his head. As he walked back towards the cafeteria, he was starting now to panic as he clearly had no idea what he could have possibly done to warrant this type of reactions from them. He wasn't even focused on going into the cafeteria. Soon he found himself sitting in the shade under the tree near the uh, ORC room. After all, uh, after a couple minutes of sitting down, he heard what sounded like a window to open to him. He looked at the school to see if anyone opened one of the windows, which there was none. Then he looked to the abandoned school building to see Rias looking out, but not at him. Soon she closed the window, but before she did, he swore she took a glance at which her eyes narrowed at him before closing it. Now he was really starting to worry, and he was also starting to get a little pissed, and he had a good reason to. No one spared any words to him or a single glance the whole entire day. I'll ask them later what is going on once I get home, thought he'd say. Soon the bell was ringing and everyone was rushing out of the hallways to get out of the building to go home. Issei was on his way out already. He originally planned on going straight home to talk to everyone, but he needed to think to himself without any distractions to hopefully narrow down any reasons why they were acting the way they were. Soon he was taking a detour to his house, one that was very familiar to him, but he didn't know exactly the way he was going. He was busy thinking to himself. Before he knew it, his thoughts were interrupted by a chilling wind. He looked around to find himself in an unforgettable area. He was looking at the fountain where his date Yuma killed him. This is where it happened. Wait, why am I now thinking about this, thought Issei. Wait a minute, thought Issei, while his face uh, contorted an expression etched with fury. No way. It can't be right. Can I? Drake, is it... Is what I'm thinking possible, asked Issei? I believe it is possible. Devils are being of greed and desire. It's likely she knew about it and took her chance, as you say, as your saver to get 
you on her side, without letting you know she knew it all along, responded Drake in a sad tone. Son of a bitch, cursed Issei as he started fuming with rage. Calm down, Issei. We don't need you going into an incomplete juggernaut drive transformation right now, smoked Drake, trying to avert disaster. Issei then took a few deep breaths, then sat down calm to himself, before it was too late. I mean, really? I might be a pervert, but I'm not an idiot. Did they think I wouldn't find out eventually, thought Issei? At first, I thought you wouldn't amount to anything, honestly, spoke Drake. Not helping, see that Issei. Let me finish what I was saying. Like I said at first, I didn't think you were really get that far. But as time went on, you drastically changed my views. In such a short time, you defeated Riser Phoenix, a person that was clearly out of your league, but you overcame the odds if you had to use some unorthodox methods. Then you successfully held your own against uh, uh, Volley, a cater of the class of the fallen, or Cocaville, a catered class of the fallen that survived the Great War. Not many people can say they went toe to toe with him and was able to do fairly well. Not to mention you also forced Volley to retreat at the peace conference as well as absorbing the dividing gem into the boosted gear. I'm fairly certain you will prove to the others that your hurricane of power that is not to be trifled with, explained Drag. Thanks. Now to deal with them. I don't know how this is gonna go, thought Issei as he from his spot thought Issei as he got up from his spot and started towards his house. Soon he was right in front of the house, but he stopped a mere fraction of an inch from the knob. He felt many presences inside, powerful ones at that. Who all is here and why, thought he say, I can't say either. No doubt is something going on, mostly like dealing with you. Be careful, partner, responded Dreg. He finally got the resolve to face his fears and open the door. He didn't see anyone when he walked in, but he saw a light coming from the kitchen, so he assumed that's why that's where they were, so he walked that way. He wasn't clearly expecting what he saw, something that clearly confused to why they were here. Sitting down at the table was Rias's barrage, as well as Sonia's along with Sir Dex, Grafia, Azazel, Akino's father, Barkil, and Sona's sister, Seraphal, Leviathan. As soon as he entered the room, he was the center of attention with everyone looking at it. He could have sworn he saw Rias smirking when she saw him. Issei, you are no longer needed, and I'm kicking you out of my barrage, spoke Rias with her smirk. What? Why? asked Issei, pan panicking. Honestly, all you ever good were was getting out of my ma manage with that prick, Riser. Other than that, you're not needed, and I never really wanted you in the first place, spoke Rias. You're just a shallow pervert, nothing else, spoke Konako. Issei, you are no longer a part of my family, spoke Sir Zex. I may be a bit of a pervert, but even I know my limits, whereas you don't, spoke Azazel. So, this is how you repay me, huh? whispered Issei. No one knew that they were just set in a motion of a chain of events that would come back to bite them in the ass later in their lives. Just leave already before you cause more harm than good, Issei, spoke Kiba while narrowing his eyes. I don't want to be your friend anymore, Issei, son. It's too much, spoke Azia. I don't want my child to have a perverted father, spoke Zenovia with eyes narrowed. They couldn't see his eyes turn emerald since they were shadowed. Ha! Very well, but before I go, I got something to say to all of you, spoke Issei. We don't care, spoke Akino, annoyed. Oh, but you will, spoke Issei while laughing. How so? asked Azazel. I may be a pervert, but at least I don't have your guys' problems. Did you guys ever stop to think that I was someone who needed help? I helped you with your fucking problems. Then you go behind my back and decide to abandon me? Fuck you and all of your problems. For one, I'll start with Rias, a severe case of greed. I know about the date with Rainer. Also, that you would be royally fucked six ways from the sun from Riser if I hadn't saved your dumbass. And you know it's true, spoke Issei. Everyone's eyes widened, and it looked like he was about to rip into each and every one of them, and there was nothing they could do about it. They had brought it upon themselves. Next is Kiba, the dimwit of the group. Are you homosexual or something? Seriously, all the girls fawn on you ever, but you don't make a move. I may be a pervert, but I know how to treat a lady. I'm surprised you haven't tried to give Gasper a rim job or something. Since you clearly have no interest in any females whatsoever, spoke Issei again, making everyone shocked. Then you have Konako, the flat-chested, emotionless midget that has an appetite of a fucking sumo wrestler, who also can't go over the fact of her sister abandoning her. It's called family for a reason, spoke Issei while fuming with rage. Everyone was starting to get scared as power was rising by the moment. The pressure started to build. Then you, Akino, who's one step closer to going full-blooded homicidal yandere with an SM fantasies? You say I have problems? Check again, spoke Issei. Don't even get me started on Asia. She has to copy everything you guys do to try to gain some attention. And you call me shallow, mocked Issei? Zenovia? Zen 
Zenobia, all she fucking cares about is trying to sit, is trying to have my kid. Literally to the point of bringing condoms inside the classroom, Spokey, you say. Irina isn't here right now since she's my childhood friend. I know she wouldn't be like this, Spatty, you say. Then you, Gasper, the cross-dressing male of the group, who is scared of the world and hides in a fucking cardboard box. Severe near to therapy, not abortion. You guys are fucking making it worse each passing moment. You suit, you smother his affectionate ass, Sp Spokey, you say. Then you have the adults of the group. First is Zazel, who says his perversion is under control. Please, I guarantee you his studies are filled with magazines and posters of his own fallen angels turned sluts, spoke Issei again, shocking everyone. Then you have Sir Zex, the siscon of the ages, who's, stu who's so too stuck up since he, the mouth to notice that his wife is probably sneaking out at night getting railed by a couple of black dudes with elephant-sized dicks, while thinking the heavens for the best gangbang in ages. Since there is no way you are pleasing her with that pitiful excuse of severe case of an erectile dysfunction, I mean seriously, I bet you have the lead on for a while while she has to face it. It's just one of those political marriages, laughed you say. Then you have fucking Citrus, or Cersei. Easily stuck up and strict as hell. Sarah Fall is a, ch a childish runt of the group who is supposed to be a Mao, spoke Issei. That's your fucking problem. So when you say I have problems when you clearly ha are the worst of the two, fucking shut the hell up and fix yours first, spoke Issei. I'm done here. I hope the next host of the Red Dragon Emperor is told about the greed of their three factions, spoke Issei. Everyone was utterly speeches at the thrashing and handing out. Purge. Both of their voices sang in unison. After the... Word rang out of the bright red flash for a few seconds before dying down, revealing a panting and bloody Issei and his hands were eight pawn pieces. See you all in hell, bitches, spoke Issei before collapsing. Well, that was clearly unexpected, spoke Azazel trying to clear up the uneasy silence. Just to teleport his body someplace random, I don't have time to deal with him, spoke Rias frustrated. Soon a magic circle enveloped Issei and his dead body disappeared. Issei awoke in a place he didn't know where it was. All he could do was trail that seemed to be endless, but he could, couldn't could really see due to all the mist covering the area. Am I dead? thought Issei. You should be, partner, responded Dreg. Dreg, if I'm dead, shouldn't you be under your next host? thought Issei confused. Normally, yes, but it seems something stopped it for a reason. Maybe you attracted someone's attention and... And did you really have to say all that to them? Spoke Drake. Hmm, I needed to vet. And they betrayed me, so fuck yeah, responded Issei. Well, whatever, the reason here should reveal itself soon, spoke Drake. And he was right. Issei Hyodo spoke an extremely powerful voice. Issei quickly spun to see a huge dragon that was covered in gray and red scales. It was easily twice the size of Drake. No way, not possible, said spoke Drake. Drake. You know who that is? asked Issei. Ah, uh, Drag, how have you been? Long time since I fought against you, spoke the dragon. Issei swore he could have heard Drag gulp. Issei, this is Bahamut, the true dragon god of annihilation, easily more powerful than Great Red. If he saved you, then there was a big reason, spoke Drag. Is that true? asked Issei. Yes. I can get you back to the land of the living, but I have reasons, you see. I was known to be one to bring about the end of the world or annihilation. But ever since I died, you could say I matured and watched from the underworld to see the world growing to show some pretty interesting stuff. I saw what happened to you, and honestly, the three factions are in need of a huge reality check. That is one condition if I help you, spoke Bahamut. What is the other one? asked Issei, confused. For too long, dragons have been getting uh, uh for too long dragons have been getting scarcer and scarcer i wanted to rebuild the dragon faction and make them respected beings we once were i will give you the power to change someone into a dragon that is the other condition i have for you responded bahamut okay then of course i accept spoke Issei. very well i will seal myself in a sacred gear and give it to you Annihilation Descent is its name. Combined with Dregs, you will be unstoppable. You will, you will need my power for the trials ahead of you to get back to the land of the living, spoke Bahamut. Soon, a bright light enveloped the whole sky as Bahamut disappeared. Issei then heard a new voice inside his head. Okay, Issei, step through the portal to begin your journey to the top, spoke Bahamut in his head. And so, Issei stepped inside the portal that opened him to next to begin his new journey back to the land of the living. Chapter 2. 
Issa has acquired some new abilities, obviously, from getting a, another host, so let's go ahead and list them. Sphere of Annihilation, Sphere created of pure energy, highly volatile and destructive. Uh, Annihilation's Call awakens primal power within Issei, giving him tremendous speed and strength and massive energy burst. Reign of Annihilation calls upon destructive weather to tear apart the area around him. He also has Balance Breaker and Juggernaut Drive with Bahamut's Sacred Gear. Harem, yes, and I will not spoil that, so let's go ahead and start Chapter 2. Issei awoke in an unfamiliar place. He had no clue where he was or where he is. But he knew for sure he wasn't back in the world of the living. He assumed it was the realm of the dead. Where am I, Drag Bahamut? asked Issei while getting up to his feet. He took a look around. To him, it looked familiar to the underworld, but he knew he possibly couldn't be there. You are in Hades' realm. The souls of the dead are here for eternity. Until they get reincarnated or return to the void is nothing, spoke Bahamut. So how do I get back? asked Issei, confused. The Well of Souls. It is a gateway between the two realms. If you can get in, you can return. You will need all the power you can since it's heavily guarded, responded Bahamut. Partner, I suggest gathering a few allies to help you, spoke Drag. Hmm, that's strange, spoke Drag. What's strange, Drag? asked Issei, confused. It seems that when Bahamut sealed himself inside of you, it negated the curse of Juggernaut Drive. Truly strange, explained uh, Drag. Juggernaut Drive? What's that? asked Issei. I forgot you haven't had a transformation yet. The Juggernaut Drive is a, mo is a move te that temporarily removes the seal on my power, fully allowing you to become extremely powerful for a limited time. Usually the Juggernaut Drive has a curse that makes the host usually go insane, but Bahamut's emergence somehow negated it. Responded Drake. Okay, then. Need to find a place to think it all over so I can get a game plan, thought Issei as he walked on. Soon after was seemed like an eternity of walking, he ended up in an old-looking town. Clearly poor by standards, he needed some information, and he and a few able-bodied allies who could handle themselves in a fight. So he did the natural thing that came to his mind and walked into the bad part of town. He pretty much followed the stench of blood and ruins of the buildings that were near him. He soon found an old rundown town, tavern, or bar. He assumed this is where all the people hung out, and he expected to find some brawls happening. He soon opened the door to find that inside. It was packed, mostly at every table there it was filled, and he could tell there was a lot of strong people in here, some more so than others. But as soon as he stepped inside, people turned to him. He could tell that he wasn't welcomed at all. Soon, So he just smirked and went to the counter where the bartender was serving a customer. Be wary of a fight breaking out. It's obvious you're not welcome here. Be prepared to show them what you can do, partner, spoke Drake. They are ants compared to you now. Your new abilities and strength far outclass even the mouths, you say. If it, if it comes to it, if it comes to it, destroy the bar to prove a point, spoke Bahamut while chuckling. Son, I suggest you state your business here, then hit the road. You may not like the result if you stay too long, spoke the bartender. I doubt if anyone here could be of use to me anyways. I just need a drink before I go, scoffed you say. That's when he heard a few footsteps coming toward him, and three voices behind him which sounded familiar. Please, he's already overstayed his welcome. This isn't a place for a brat, spoke a male. Don't a seek. I think you had too much to drink, but I agree. This ain't the place for brats or kids, spoke a girl who was astoundingly familiar to Issei. Issei felt like his heart stopped. He stopped breathing altogether. He needed to get out of there fast or else the bar would be blown to smithereens. The bartender caught sight of the expression Issei had. Drake. Tell me what I heard was just some fucked up hallucination due to the alcohol, thought he say, trying not to explode with fury. I'm sorry, partner, but what? But that is what you heard, and they have, and they do have the auras of fallen angels, responded Drag. Hey, kid, are you alright? You look like you've seen a ghost or something, spoke the bartender. Is this brat scared or something? Don't seek in rain air. What did, what did you guys do to make this kid scared? Haha, <laughs> asked a new voice. Kyla Warner, he just wandered in here for no reason spoke Dina seek and he told him to get lost then he started to act like that spoke right there a low growl escaped from Issei's lift and they heard it what was that brat asked Dona seek menacingly then Issei stood up and uttered one sentence that shocked everyone to their cores I'm sorry for taking your time sir but before I leave I got one question can you point me in the direction of the well of souls 
spoke Issei quietly, but everyone heard him. Are you insane? The Well of Souls is heavily guarded. No one has ever passed through it without Hades' permission, shouted Rainer. That's when their world was shocked even more by one other sentence that was uttered. Maybe I am, Yuma. After all, you just know who I am, spoke Issei with his eyes clenched. Rainer backed up in fear quickly. Everyone's eyes widened and they backed up from Issei as he summoned his boosted gear. Issei asked Rainer quietly, who else? I'm Issei Hyoto, possessor of Dreg, the Welch Dragon, and now Bahamut the Annihilation Dragon God, spoke Issei as he summoned his other sacred gear. The Annihilation Descent looked familiar to the boosted gear, except it was gray and red covered it his entire right arm as well as it looked sharper and it was emitting a powerful energy off of it. Everyone stared at it in awe in what it was releasing. I will ask again, where's the Well of Souls? I plan on returning to the world of the living, spoke Issei. Everyone was utterly shocked at the power he was radiating. They knew he was deadly serious about it, so the bartender pulled out a map and pointed to a small area, area near the end of the map. It was quite a distance away, clearly for security purposes. Once again, I'm sorry for taking your time. I will leave now. I have a goal to complete, spoke Issei as he stood up and walked out, not sparing any glances towards the fallen that were scared shitless. As soon as he stopped at outside he spared no more moments and started on his way but he was soon stopped as he heard scurrying footsteps behind him he wasn't surprised when he saw the three fallen behind him not daring to make eye contact what the fuck do you want spat say please he say take us with you begged renair why should i mocked Ace, who was trying not to level the town with his rage neither calamar or donasik dared to speak to you out of fear but renair continued anyways i know i did you wrong but I was under the orders from Cocaville. I actually had fun on our date, whispered Rainer, but Issei heard every word of it. And he didn't know what to think. He was already betrayed by his old loved ones, so what was he supposed to do? Could she be lying? I don't know. I don't think I could take another heartbreak, or I might destroy everything, thought Issei. I think she's telling the truth. Cocaville did trick her, and she does look truly sorry. It's up to you, responded Drag. After a few moments of tense silence, Issei finally came to an answer. Fine. But a warning... But a warning you cross me, a warning you cross me, and I won't hesitate to rip you from limb to limb twice over, spat Issei. They weren't expecting him to accept it. They knew they had to earn his trust. Rainer might have had it easier, but there was still tension between the two, and there would be until Issei could accept her without hesitating. And that is the end of the first episode. Hopefully you guys did enjoy part one. I read about two chapters. The story is quite good if I do say so for myself. The story will be linked in the description if you want to read it for yourself. But thank you for all the support on the channel. And without further ado, pa 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 pa, peace.